So, UFC Sao Paulo, Almeida vs. Lewis takes place this weekend, and I'm going to be going through the entire card, starting with the first prelim, ending with the main event, giving my prediction and breakdown of every single fight on the card, as well as giving some props and parlays um, for the betting section at the end of the video as well. I just recorded a fucking video of this. I just re I'm just having to re-record it because my fucking camo, my sound wasn't working, um, so I was speaking in mute. Um, so very unfortunate, I'm pretty fucking annoyed by that. But, we go. We continue. Um, here are the picks. So, we start off Mark Jacasey versus Caio Fernandez. Um, I'm going to be picking Mark Jacasey in this fight. I think he can get it done across the 15 minutes. I think he's going to just win a decision. Um, using that kind of UFC experience, he's going to be better than Fernandez. Um, and he's just going to be used to these kind of situations, these scenarios more. He's going to know what he's doing. Um, I see him out kickboxing him. I see him doing better in the grappling exchanges. I don't see, like, a blowout in any area. Like, I'm not like, oh, jeez, Jacasey's just a fucking levels better striker than him. I think he's just going to be, like, a little bit better everywhere. And that's going to lead to a pretty clean 29-28 or 30-27 decision win um, for Mark Jacasey. On the odds line, he's minus 179. Kyo Fernandez, plus 144. If you do think Fernandez gets it done in the debut, then a minus, a plus 144 tag is not bad. I wouldn't be money lining a Mark Jacasey, but he's definitely not my favorite pick on the card. But we move on. So the next fight on the card, it's Ed Eduardo Moura versus Montserrat Ruiz. Um, this one's a pretty straightforward one to predict. This one should be uh, pretty simple. I do believe that Eduardo Moura is going to thoroughly dominate and out-grapple Montserrat Ruiz and just submit her probably inside a couple rounds, um, or at least get a, get a finish inside the distance. Look, Montserrat Ruiz in her last fight against Jacqueline Amarim looked pretty bad in the grappling. She got completely dominated. 30, well, like, she was down two rounds. One of them was a 10 8, and then she eventually got for dominantly finished in the third round. So, her defensive grappling definitely been leaving a lot to be desired. Um, definitely not someone. Uh, that you're going to struggle with in the grappling. And I do think that Eduardo Moura has shown in her contender series fight and also in her previous fights on the regional scene that she's perfectly fine to take take girls down and just submit them. So I see her doing that here. The odds reflect the dominance that I we predict. Um, she's minus 588. Montserrat Ruiz is plus 410. Um, I don't like a bet on women's MMA at those kind of odds at all. I don't really like betting on women's MMA in any way. But um, that, that's the pick. I'm picking it by more to pretty dominantly beat Montserrat Ruiz. Um, the next fight on the card is another women's MMA fight. It's Denise Gomez versus Angela Hill. So, Denise Gomez coming in at minus 133. Angela Hill at plus 110. Um... This one's been one I've been going back and forth on. So, originally, I was like, definitely Denise Gomez. I was like, there's no way Angela Hill, she's not going to be that good. She's going to KO her. And then I was like, nah, Angela Hill's got the veteran experience. She could probably get it done across the 15 minutes. But I am ultimately going to pick Denise Gomez. I think she's going to catch Angela Hill, drop her. And I think she's going to find a TKO victory here, to be honest. Um... Angela Hill, it's not like she gets dropped and stuff all the time, it's not like she's super chinny, but she's getting older in her career, and while the veteran experience can definitely help you in a fight like this against the younger opponent in Denise Gomez, I do think eventually she's going to probably start going downhill, and I don't think her chin's going to be the same, I don't think her reaction time's going to be the same, and I think on the feet, Gomez is just going to be too much for her, and she's going to just kind of surprise her, come out the gate straight away, and almost be shocked with how... um with how quick and how powerful Denise Gomez is. So, I'm taking Denise Gomez with a round one TKO. I think it's going to probably be a bit of an early stoppage as well, as I'm going to, I'm going to predict that as like a little side note. I think she's going to drop her and just swarm her with punches, and the referee's going to just... It's going to be a bad visual. So, I do think the ref's going to step in and stop a fight there. Denise Gomez, round one TKO, but definitely could be seeing Angela Hill just with a 30-27 decision, just using that veteran experience. But... We move on up the card. It's Vitor Petrino against Modestus Bukowskis. So, Vitor Petrino, I'm picking him to win this fight. I think he's going to thoroughly dominate Modestus Bukowskis in the grappling. But if he tries to stand with Modestus or if he can't get the takedowns, I can see him getting kind of fraud checked here by a guy in Bukowskis who's got a bit of range on the kickboxing. And although he's not the best kickboxer, he finds a way to just make things awkward and make guys not good. Um, like he did against Tyson Pedro. Apparently, Pedro said he was like sick and stuff like that. Um, 
But Paterno is a physical specimen. I do see him being able to take down um, Modestus Pekaskis with ease. In his fight with Marcin Prachnia, he actually looked pretty solid. I liked how he performed in that fight. Um, subbed him dominantly, and he went to the grappling a lot more in, in that fight than he did in his debut against Anton Tricali, who didn't look... Um, in that fight, he didn't look amazing, and I wasn't thinking too highly of him, but he kind of ran through... Marcin Patch now and kind of brought back a bit of the hype for me and I do think he's going to have a similar sort of performance against Modestus Bukowskis here. I don't see him being able to get the kickboxing going. I think he's going to be a bit intimidated by the size and the physical presence um, and I do see him probably getting finished. I'm going to go with a sub. I could see a TKO due to ground strikes though. Um, Bukowskis sitting at uh, plus 178. Um, Petrina the favourite at minus 222. Um, definitely see those lines as appropriate. Maybe I, I would have probably liked a little bit uh, more uh, more value on Petrino, but he's a big favourite and he should win this fight in my eyes. We move on. Renat, uh, sorry, to the next fight. Yeah, Renat Fakradinov versus Azalei Daleski Dos Santos. Um, this one's another wide line and another pick that I'm pretty confident in. I'm picking Renat Fakradinov as pretty much everyone is. Look, if you look at his last fight, he absolutely smoked and ran through Kevin Lee and absolutely killed him. Um, and before that, he had a dominant win over Brian Battle, who's also a pretty solid fighter. So, I do see him getting this one done. I don't think Azalea Deleski Dos Santos is in his prime anymore. I think the days of him um, putting on a beating on Buenos Saint Denis and TKO and Sean Strickland, I think those days are over. I think we're well past those days and... Uh, I think we're looking at a much older, much less like dangerous version of DeSantos. He's not going to have that KO. He's obviously going to have a KO power, but I don't see him being as quick as Renat, and I don't see his chin being able to stand up to a few of those right hands that Renat Fakhrudinov can land on you. So I'm going to take Renat Fakhrudinov. I'm going to take him by a TKO. I'm going to back him to have an impressive performance, but I ultimately could definitely see this going distance. I wouldn't bet on a Renat TKO. I'd probably just put you, put him in your parlays. Um, but... He's minus 370, big line, not worth a money line. DeSantos at plus 280. If you think that he might just veteran kind of experience win against Renat, I guess you could put some money on that. But ultimately, I think this is one that you stay away from uh, on the money lines here. Um, but I ultimately obviously do see Renat getting this one done dominantly. The next fight is Daniel Marcos versus Victor Hugo. This is one that I'm not all that confident on because I've been hearing a lot of people talk very highly of Victor Hugo and I've been hearing a lot of people um, predict him to win this matchup. But ultimately, I am going to go with Daniel Marcos here. I think his last fight against David Grant wasn't too bad. Like I know he didn't throw a whole lot and I know a lot of people thought he kind of got a robbery decision in that and a lot of people didn't think he deserved to win. But ultimately... I think he's going to show out here. I think he's going to, going to be impressive, just like he was uh, in his debut or in his so in his first fight uh, earlier in the year. Sorry, um, when he fought Simon Oliveira and TKO'd him badly with body shots. So I see him doing a similar sort of like coming out with a similar sort of aggressiveness. But I'm going to respect Victor Hugo's toughness. I'm going to say this fight goes long, and I'm going to pick Daniel Marcos by 29-28 decision. Maybe a split if a judge gives it to Hugo. But I do see. Um, Daniel Marcos getting this one done. We move on. Uh, up the card, it's Elvis Brenner versus Kainan Khrushchev. This one is, apologies for the mispronunciation, this one's a late notice replacement. He was going to fight, Elvis Brenner was going to fight Esteban Rybovich, and I was going to pick him to win that fight as well. And obviously, I'm going to keep, and I'm going to still pick him to beat uh, Kainan Khrushchev here. I think he's going to get a finish too. He looked amazing against Guram Kutataladze. That is a really good win to have on your resume. Um, a lot of people went going into that fight, me included, were like, there's no way he beats Guram. Um, like, he was going to fight Jordan Levin, and then he's just got dealt Guram on short notice. Like, there's no way he wins. But then he broke Guram and won. Um, so, incredibly impressive performance. What the fuck's going on with this camera? Incredibly impressive performance from... Um, from Elvis Brenner, and I think he's going to do a similar sort of thing here, and just kind of break down Khrushchev on short notice, probably not going to look um, spectacular, probably not going to have the gas tank, and I do see him out cardioing, and then finishing kind of Khrushchev in the later rounds, um, impressively, I think I'll go with a sub, uh, I'll go with a submission, but he could uh, get the TKO, so Elvis Brenner inside the distance is my pick here. Um, he sits at minus 192, Khrushchev at plus 153. If you think he gets it done on short notice and upsets Brenner, um, maybe worth a sprinkle, but ultimately, 
you got to go with the shootbox savage in Elvis Banner to get this one done. We move on up the card. It's to the main card. It's Ishmael Bonfim versus Vince Pichel. Um, this one is one I'm pretty confident in, as are most people. We're picking Ishmael Bonfim here to get a KO over Vince Pichel is a lot of people's picks. Um, I'm pretty confident on this. Look, he, he got smoked in his last fight by Bernard St. Denis, but... Bernard St. Denis just ran through Thiago Moises in inside two rounds, so that's not like a bad loss to have. I think that was a a, mis a mistake by the UFC if they if they booked that fight trying to give Bernard so to give Bonfim like an easy stepping stone. They definitely um, that was a misguided booking of that fight, but ultimately I do think that he's going to smoke Vince Pichel. I think this one's like a Okay, your last fight, we did we did you wrong. We gave you a guy that was a bit too high, a bit too soon. So now we're going to tone it back, and we're going to give you a 41-year-old Vince Pichel who lost to Mark Madsen. Um, that's the kind of thing we're looking at here. The former pay-per-view main card opener in Vince Pichel. He opened the main card of a pay-per-view against Mark Madsen. So that was a rough, that was a rough fight to pay for on pay-per-view. Uh, but regardless... Um, Bonfim should run through him, Bonfim should smoke him, Bonfim should KO him, and I think he'll get it done inside the first round. Um, that's my pick, Bonfim KO, first round, easy, done, you're done. Um, Armin Petrosian versus Adolfo Vieira is the next fight on the card. Did I mention the odds? Um, Ishmael Bonfim, minus 588, Vince Pichel, plus 410, not worth a bet on Pichel as an underdog, I really don't think he wins. Um, and Bonfim should be going in your parlays, no single bets on, we don't, we don't put single bets on minus 600, that's not what we do here. Um... But the next fight is Armand Petrosian against Adolfo Vieira. Um, this one is a really close one, the st classic striker versus grappler matchup. I've been going back and forth on who I think is going to win, and I've landed on Armand Petrosian. I think he's going to get a TKO win, and I think he is going to just completely outdo Adolfo Vieira on the feet. And I think he's going to stuff his takedowns because if you look at Adolfo's fights, he doesn't get a heap of takedowns. Like, he has taken down people. He took down Cody Bondage, that kind of thing. He subbed him. But he got dropped by Cody Bondage. And Cody Bondage is terrible. Cody Bondage fights like my fucking grandma. So, I don't think Cody Bondage is impressive. And I don't think a win over him is impressive either. Especially when you get dropped by him, like Adolfo Vieira did. Despite having a really short reach, I do see Petrosian doing a similar thing. But I do see him getting the finish. He doesn't have a whole lot of KO power, so... I could see this one going long, and I could see him just thoroughly outstriking him uh, across the distance. I can definitely see that occurring. But ultimately, I'm going to pick him to get a TKO. I think he's going to catch uh, hold, hold, uh, fuck. He's going to catch Adolfo Vieira with a shot, and he's not going to like it. And Adolfo is going to kind of shell up and not know what to do. He's going to try and go to guard and get some jujitsu going. I think, but. I think Armand's going to land some ground and pound, and the referee's going to stop it, and the crowd won't be happy about it anyway whatsoever. Um, we move on. Up the card. They're both uh, minus 109, by the way, so it's a pick and fight. We move on, though. Up the card. Takaya Baralio against Abbas Magomedov. You took a shit on the back of a bus, and I'm never picking you again, you fucking bond victim. You fool. I'm not picking Abbas Magomedov. I am going to pick Kaio Baralio here. Um, that's going to be my call. Look. Could Abbas win and could um, his loss against Sean Strickland end up really aging well, um, given that Sean Strickland beat Israel Adesanya? Yes, absolutely. He could definitely get this one done, and that could be a one-off performance. Um, but ultimately, I didn't like how he looked, obviously. Even in the first round, like he just didn't look amazing. Like He was he was throwing some kicks and stuff. He, di he didn't look like crazy good, though. He's lost in the PFL as well. It's not like it's not like he was some 20-0 undefeated prospect, and then Sean Strickland came in, and he caught him at the right time, you know, I don't know, like, he gassed out, um, like, this, that, he just broke completely after not being able to get anything going in the first round, so, I don't see him having success against Kyo Borrelio, I don't see Kyo even having the composure like Sean to just kind of let the guy gas himself out, I think Kyo's just going to go balls to all and just try and finish him, I think he's going to take him down, and I do believe he's going to get a submission victory here, is my pick here. Kyle Borrello, by submission, or at least by finish, maybe he decides to put a bit of extra heat on it and get the ground and pound going. But I think Kyle is going to submit him. I think Abbas is going to gas again, and I think he's not going to have a lot of things off his back once Kyle gets him down. So, Kyle Borrello submission. Um, Borrello money line sits at minus 303. Abbas at plus 230. If you like that Abbas line, that definitely would be something to put some money on, but I ultimately don't think he gets it done. Um, but 
we move on uh, up the card. Rodrigo Nascimento versus Don Tail Mays. Um, the rematch that no one asked for, the fat heavyweights that we didn't need to see fight again. But we're going to see it anyway. So thank the UFC. Great matchmaking here, lads. I think it's pretty clear they're probably just giving um, Nascimento like a pretty comfortable um, comfortable win here in a fight that they know he can definitely win. I do think he gets this one done pretty clearly. Um, submission, I do think is live. Minus 200 for Nascimento, plus 159 for Dante Mays. Um, I ultimately see this going similar to the first fight I see. I don't see Dante Almeida as impressive in any way. He basically got held against the fence by Augusto Sakai and dominated for three rounds. So I don't see him being able to fend off any grappling from Rodrigo Nascimento, and I do think Nascimento gets a sub in the end. Maybe like maybe gasses him out due to laying his breasts on his face. You know, maybe he does that. Um, but yeah, as I said, minus two hundred for Nascimento. Not a not a money line. I'm overly appealed by given its heavyweights. But we move on. Gabriel Bonfim versus Nicholas Dalby. I'm picking uh, Gabriel Bonfim pretty obviously in this matchup. I think he gets this one done. Pretty clearly, I don't see a reason to not pick him. Um, look, Dalby's tough. He's a veteran. He's been around for a bit. He's had some scraps, but I ultimately think Gabriel Bonfim is younger. He's hungrier. He's got more finishing potential as well. Dalby went to a close fight with Wally Alves um, a couple fights ago, so... I just don't see this one going well for him, to be honest, at all. I do see um, I do see Gabriel Bonfim finding a submission pretty early on and uh, getting a bonus and making the Brazil crowd real excited for this one. Um, if you look at his last two fights, Trevin Giles, Munoz, Lazez, he just ran through him and subbed him immediately, um, which is really impressive. Trevin Giles is actually a pretty solid fighter, so I do think the hype is real on Gabriel Bonfim, and I do think... He does finish Dalby. Terrible line, though, minus 667 for him. Dalby plus 450, so yeah. We move on, though. Jalton Almeida versus Derek Lewis. Um, the main event of the evening. Uh, it's time, you know, we, we love this one. We do love ourselves some Jelton Almeida fights, um, and we, we do know what's going to happen. We, we we are aware he is going to take down Derek Lewis. He is going to submit him. Um and he's going to do it pretty comfortably in the first round, is my pr is my prediction. Um, look, ultimately, um, there's always that chance that Lewis just catches him and KOs him. Like, that's just a thing that exists when Derek Lewis fights. He can catch people, and he can KO them. But I think Helmade is smart enough. I think he stays out of range, and I think he shoots in at the right time, gets a double leg on Derek Lewis, who abbreviated training camp, and also has just never had the most impressive grappling skills, to be honest. To be honest. Um, I see him getting this one done pretty comfortably, and I see him light, uh, sending the Brazil home, Brazil crowd home happy. Um, if you look at this, like really, like if you want to fucking analyze it, I didn't even need all. I didn't even watch tape for this. Like you can just look at Derek Lewis and see he gets taken down easily. He's got like a fifty percent takedown defense rate. He's not the hardest guy to take to the mat. Obviously, he does have the just stand up strategy, but. Against a guy in Almeida, who's not a fat heavyweight, I do think he's actually going to take his back if he does that. And I think he's going to submit him in the first round, maybe soften him up with some ground and pound, and then go for that rear naked choke finish. So I see that occurring. I see Almeida getting a dominant and easy win. Um, and yeah, that's what's going to happen. But... Let's look at some of the props um, here. So if you want to, if you're not a big fan of a lot of these wide money lines, because if you look at some of these lines, we're looking at some bad stuff. We got minus 588, minus 220, minus 370, minus 240, minus 580. Um, what else do we have here? Minus 303, minus 200, minus 670, minus 560. Like those are some ugly lines. So. If you want to get some of those down, and if you want to get some plus money on your slate, then here's a couple fights for you. So, Marcus versus Hugo, I think fight's going to go the distance. I respect both guys' toughness. I think it's going to be a, a competitive and pretty fun scrap. Plus 129 for that fight to go long. Um, Ishmael Bonfim KO at plus 145 with just a round one KO at plus 300. I think you get, you, you're turning a, a minus 600 into a plus 140 just for a KO prop, I'm taking that all day. Um, 
Armand Petrosian to get a KO is plus 270, but on the other side, if you think Vieira gets the sub, that's plus 205. I think those two are the outcomes that are more likely to occur. Um, Caio Borrelio to win in round two is something I've contemplated, given that Abbas's last fight, how it went after he gassed in the first, that's plus 500. Um, and if you just think Borrelio gets the finish in general, that's plus 118. So you're getting some nice plus money there um, to narrow down that minus 300 favorite. Um, if you want to bet on heavyweights and if you want to ruin your bank account, then you can bet on an Asimento submission or points at minus 120. Um, not my most confident pick, but I wanted to give a I wanted to give a, a prop for every fight on the main card. A Gabriel Bonfim sub is at plus 130. I love that odds because you're giving me you're turning a minus 670 into a into a plus one hunt, well, what plus 130 just for a submission prop when that's literally all he's been doing in his last fights. Give me that all day. And then if you think he gets it done in the first by submission, that's plus 250 as well. Pretty solid odds there. Um, and then for the main event, I've got a couple here. Jelton Almeida by a round one sub, plus 145. Round two sub at plus 1,000 if you think he takes a little bit longer and just holds on to Lewis for five minutes first. Just the Jelton Almeida sub in general, not quite plus money, but still a very appealing minus 112. Delta Almeida to win in round one, if you think he might also go for the ground and pound finish, that's minus 167. Um, and if you're on the Lewis train as well, if you do think Lewis has a good shot, but you do also want to uh, give yourself the chance of the Almeida win, if you're, pretty, if you're feeling pretty neutral about this fight, but you do think it ends quickly, then a fight to end in round one is minus 263. I like that line a lot. But let's go to the parlays. You know, if you want to spice things up, if you want to... If you want to um, get that get that final leg uh, nerves, if you want to be a bit nervous going into the last fight on the on the parlay, then I got a few of them for you. So we start off with a five legger. We got Renat Fukratinov, Elvis Brenner, Ishmael Bonfim KO, Gabriel Bonfim sub, and then Jelta Al made it in the first three rounds. Ten dollars returns one thirty seven. I like those odds. I think that's a solid lineup on your slate. If you want to go for the Bonfim brothers, and if you think they both get the finish, and if you think they both get that finish in the first round, then you go with a Bonfim round one KO, that's Ishmael, and then you go with a Gabriel round one sub, that's plus 250. Um... So for a Bonfim round one KO and a Bonfim round one sub, you get plus thirteen hundred odds. Ten dollars turns to one forty. I like that a lot. If you go, if you want high confidence, if you just want all the big favorites on the card, I give you Petrino, I give you Baralio, I give you Brenner, I give you Almeida, and then I give you the Bonfim brothers all on a six leg parlay. You get plus three sixty five for that. So not the most appealing line for a six leg parlay, but that's all high confidence. Um, and then if you want one more, if you if you like some fights to end in round one, if you want some quick finishes, I give you Bonfim Brothers and I give you Almeida to win in round one at plus 9.35 there. Um, I think that's likely to hit. I like a lot of those parlays. I like a lot of those props as well that I told you. Um, I really like that um, fight to end in round one for the main event at minus 260. I think that's great odds. Um, but... Ladies and gentlemen, those are the picks. That's the whole lot. Um, those are the UFC Sao Paulo picks. As I said before, I fucking recorded this video before, um, and the fucking volume wasn't working. So I, I assume the volume's working now. If you can hear me, that's great. If not, I'm probably going to kill myself. Um, but that's the picks, guys. Let me know who you guys are picking. Let me know if you guys are laying down any parlays or any bets for this card. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Go check out my YouTube channel. Go subscribe, all that. Or you're on my YouTube channel. But if you haven't subscribed, you got to subscribe. We're almost at 100 subscribers. So that would be much appreciated. Go watch my recent PowerPoint video, ranking the divisions from worst to best. It's doing pretty well. Um, yeah, go follow my Instagram, Left Lane MMA, all of that. Like, subscribe, notifications, all the bullshit. You know? um, and I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be the full card recap probably on a Sunday. Uh, peace out, everybody.